right, welcome guys to the channel. Today I've got a discussion panel with three of my good friends here, uh, Roberto Lozano, Kevin Abernathy, and Tony Jimenez. Uh, say hello guys. What up? Yo. So basically what we're going to talk about tonight is the upcoming tournament for Madison and how Seattle has changed the metagame completely uh, from what we expected. Uh, the big thing that came out of Seattle was the big, the resurgence of Garbodor and Drampa. Garbodor SP on as well as another variant of it. Just Garbodor is so dominant in this. Why do you guys think that is? Why do you think Do Why do you think Garbodor was that dominant going into from Seattle? I don't know. We'll start with Tony. Okay. Um, I think Garbodor is dominant going, or I think it was dominant going into Seattle because you can't you can't really not play items. Yeah, there's no way to play around it. Like, yeah, you have to play, play Too items. many people played into it. Yeah, I think a lot of people still had Trainer Mail in their deck, and there's a lot of cards that were not good for and the like, format. In, in Seattle, like, you saw a lot of people going down to 3 VS secret, but upping N and Sycamore to 4. Yeah, right. Also, Absol yeah, good. Absolutely. I mean, for the format. Yeah, it's, it's good because that way, like, you could just try to... I don't think people really adapted their deck list very well uh, overall. Like, you saw some people go, go to 3VS, some people did it, some people, like, decided to go to four, try to go to 3N instead of instead of 2. Uh, but I think ultimately, uh, and this was something that kind of the, came up around the weekend, too, was that Dark Rider list that showed up with the four 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 two. A lot of people think that that's going to be the new resurgence of, of how basically the road that that's going to go down uh do you guys agree with that like with everything or do you, is it just for dark Riot, or is it kind of just more or less for every every deck's going to go down that route of just playing four of every supporter and only like two vs and just try to go as little items as possible uh daniel we'll start with you on that. Um, you know i could see it being the norm in some decks but i don't know i just feel like Two vs seeker is very risky. It's a very risky play. Like I know you upped your like supporter count, but that means you don't have the versatility of what vs seeker had to offer versus now just putting in another N and another Juniper. It's just there's like it limits your options. I don't know. I could see it going both ways, but I'll probably still stick with playing at least three, maybe the lowest is what I would go. But I don't know. Uh, I think that with most people going to four supporters on, like, everything, so almost, like, four Lysander, four Sycamore, four N, um, which is pretty standard now. I think I like doing three BS Seeker, three Lysander, I think. I think it's, like, an even split. Um, it's not over heavy. I think four, having four Lysander in your deck is going to be really dead. I understand, like, the first, like, six turns of the game anyway are just you guys ending each other until someone sets up the Dramper first. But um, Garbodor Mirror Match is just strange. Hard to play. I mean, you just don't play anything, really. <laughs> so, it's hard to play. Um, I feel like it just, it depends on the deck. Like, with Darkrai, it already played almost four of everything. Well, so, I, I feel like, I feel like it wouldn't necessarily make that much of a difference. And if, if you're playing 15 energy in Darkrai, and you're not really playing EX Tinker anymore, like, you're almost always going to hit elixirs. You're never... That list still played 4 XP share. Yeah, that's did, crazy. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. It did play 4 XP share. It played 4 XP share. It was 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 4 It played 4 alters. No, it only I played have, 2 alters, I think. I never, I never, shoot. 2 alter, yeah. 4 max elixir, 4 ultra ball. I just built it this morning online, yeah, too. Yeah, 4 of those. <laughs> um, yeah, no, it was crazy. There's a lot of 4 of It's yeah. crazy. I don't oh. know. That that deck seems crazy to me. I thought Darkrai was going to be dead because Field Blower would get rid of the XP shares. It would just, like, it would limit that, like, option that the deck used to carry because there was no tool removal before this. So with, like, Field Blower being out, it's just that it's hard for Darkrai to stay uh, hitting hard with its energies if it can't keep it on the board, obviously. So, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people gave up on it. So for him to, like, surprise the meta and be like dark right can still survive and maybe a dream for guard format who knows because it does play 15 energy and then like i don't know i didn't really count the traders but i feel like it would probably maybe play close to maybe 10 i don't know 
Yeah, your, your trainer four count two? can't be very high. No. Four max elixir, four ultra ball. Two VS. Yes. VS seekers, yeah, the, the field the, blowers, the, and the items. The, the, the eight, eight tools. Yeah, the four tool, four four tools. Um, so who knows? Out, like, but... I'm excited to see like what's gonna happen in Madison <laughs> this weekend because it's just will it still stay a draft of guard format or will it shift to something different? Like, who knows? I like, think a lot of Lamarantis is gonna show up this weekend. I think, yeah, I think. Now people are excited to try to counter a deck yeah. that they know is going to be there and hope that the deck choice they choose is the right counter to it, plus countering all these other decks that are still existing in the format, like Gyarados and uh, Desi Plume is still there. This new Ninetales variant, like, yeah. there's a lot of decks out there still. I don't see I don't see Drampagarb winning this tournament this weekend. I just don't. I, don't, I think more people will be ready for it than... I mean, 26 out of our 24 out of 30 G spots this weekend. So, of course, it'll be in the top cut, but I don't think it'll be uh, winning the tournament. I mean, and if we be... do see Drampa Garb, it's, it's those good players who feel comfortable playing it again and know its matchups are comfortable with maybe playing Mirror because a lot of people will just try to pick up the deck, but it is now a skill intensive like matchup. Like, you have to be able to make the right plays at the right times or else you'll be punished because. Uh, the deck is so easily, like, ready to strike back if you miss something. I don't know. Do you agree with that, Tony? Um, yeah, definitely. Like Kevin said, I honestly don't see Drampo Garb winning this tournament. Just because, like, uh, Tapu Bulu is getting a lot of hype right now. Um, either with Vickable or Lurantis. But either way, like... Top of Bulu is just a really strong card in general. I agree. I really like that card. Like, we've been testing it. We kind of tried to go like an aggro version where it was just like max elixirs and you just played Tapu Bulu without Lorantis, and it was like doing pretty well. We, but we did have like the Lorantis promo to do 20 more damage for its attack. So it was really strong. Like, its GX is super strong. Like, being able to do such a huge amount of damage and heal all the damage off of you it's just like it's a nine tails but better because it's not like it's not swapping the damage but you're like you're still doing it being able to do 150 with choice band 180 and heal all your damage like that's like a little bit ridiculous to me i don't know i, totally... I think that's why the hype so now with lorantis like like that's like a good guard counter like i find it being bulky enough to like Handle Garbodor plus healing its uh, damage. Like it one shots it with three energy. Like it's not that hard to get it with the flower supply for one. Like uh, Choice Band now makes it for seventy damage. That's decent. Like that's so good for just one energy. I think, so, I think I it's know. also, I think it's also because the deck relies on energy, more right. than like almost almost items. So it it's it's good enough card heavy format is what I'm getting at. Yeah, true. I totally agree. And honestly, like, it, it all comes down to, I think you guys are overall right. I think that, again, uh, Drampa Garb probably won't win this event because people will be more ready for it. Uh, stuff like Lorantis, Nine Tails are good counters to it uh, if you if they're played correctly and if the lists are built correctly. Um, but at the same time, I also do see, like you said, like the good players may ultimately just be comfortable with the deck and they may just play Drampa Garb or play Espeon Garb. Yeah. Um, now, let me ask this. What version do you guys think is better? SBR Garb or Drampo Garb? And why? Uh, we'll start with uh, Tony on this one. Um, SBR Garb versus Drampo Garb is... Um, I don't know. It just it just depends. Because with SBR, like you're going to confuse them. And with Choice Band, like, it's, it's also really good. And I think like, like overall, it's just a really strong attack. But with Espeon, I think if you're going to play Espeon, you have to expect decks like Vespa Quinn or Gyarados. Stuff, stuff that just you can pick at with the uh, Divide GS. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I like. I think that Espeon Garb has a little bit of an advantage just because it does have like the Divide GX. Um, it has the ability to, like Tony said before, confuse your opponent for one energy, like you can grab that with the Pokemon Fan Club or Bridget, whatever you play, like, get the Eevee, attach an energy, SB on first turn, do the 30 Confuse. Like, that's so strong. That's a lot of pressure. Now they, yeah. now they have to be able to flip that heads, or if they don't, that's 30 damage, setting you up for a knockout next turn. 
if you have like a Drampa on your bench or something. So I think I it also know. forces you to play like uh, I remember someone saying that like they force you to play double floats down, and you yeah. never want to play two tools against the mirror match ever. Yeah, it, it gives you forty damage with field blower. It's just it's amazing. So don't ever do that if, if you're playing Drampa this weekend. Try not to do that if you can. Um, but if they set you up with the Espeon rehab set. Probably double floats are down on the field. It's, it's, it causes an issue. I think Espeon's a lot better in mirror match, personally. Um, Espeon's a lot of pressure early game. All it needs is an EB and an energy. You can even start with EB and an energy. It's really good against most matchups. Um, but it's a liability late game when you have to play trainers. So um, you will get one shot by a Garbodor, probably. Or you can even get uh, the second attack and just uh, attach a uh, choice band, and that's 200 damage right there. So uh, it's a liability at the end of the game. But I do think it's a lot better early game, which I think the deck strives on. So probably better. I actually agree with that too. Um, I think Espeon is really more geared towards the mirror match, uh, just because it does it does require them to to either hit like their Olympia or hit double flow. So like you're saying, but again, it also field blowers. Um, I know some lists were playing Alter compared to the Magma base, and I think that the Alter gives you a better Espeon uh, matchup if you're expecting a lot of Espeon. And I think Magma, since Sam Chen won with the Magma Base, I think Magma Base is going to be kind of the standard. Uh, I think if you can get Magma Bases, of course, then uh, get put, they play it. But I think Alter will ultimately be the better choice if there's a lot of Espeon being played because you can just free retreat out of it, uh, make it so you don't have to play those floatstones for confusion. But at the same time, I think Drampa Garb, like just the normal version, is better overall in other matchups. Uh, just because like the the that one eighty pr- or that one fifty pressure with a magma base drop of turn two on a Drampa is really disgusting against a lot of matchups, but uh, I do think that uh, Espeon is going to be the better play for mirror match, and so going into Madison it might be better to play Espeon Garb versus Drampa Garb only because if you're expecting a lot of mirror, which I think with Seattle's results I think we are expecting a lot of mirror, so. Basically, if you're going to play Drampa Garb, I would take it towards Mirror more than anything uh, and be very, very prepared for the Mirror match. But ultimately, uh, it's either in this format play Garbodor or play something that counters it. Uh, we mentioned two decks that counter it pretty well, uh, Nightales and Lorantis uh, Bulu. What are some other decks that you guys think that could counter, would be good against Garb or in general just be good against in the meta game uh, going into Madison? Uh, Daniel, we'll start with you. This one. Um, so I've actually been testing this crazy deck uh, that I think could be great against Drampa Garb, but I don't know how it would hold against uh, a lot of other decks. It's um, Honch Pro Tapu Coco, the new promo. Like uh, That's definitely got a lot of hype since its release, so nice. we wanted to try something with it. So pretty much the idea is obviously to spread with Tapu Coco and then you just sweep with Honchko because Honchko's attack does, uh, tw- I believe it's 20 plus 10 or 10 plus 10 for all the damage counters on your opponent's side of the field. So after you spread twice, let's say they have even four Pokemon and that's 40 damage on each, that's 160 plus the 10 that you do initially is 170 with a choice band that's 200. It's like, it's for so much and it's just a 90x attacker so uh, I've paired it with Drampa and Tapu Lele, so it's just pretty much Drampa Garb, but you replace the Garb with Hotchka, essentially, and you just uh, heavy, yeah, heavy Coco. So I don't know. I love Coco. I think I think it is getting a lot of hype, like uh, Jirachi promo, but I think it's going to be one of those promos that you can tech into any deck. So I it's just anything with the if you play DC, it's just it's a good counter, like. It stops Gyarados from, like, destroying you. Like, if they don't get Mr. Mime out, you're destroying them. It's not even a fun match to play. And I don't know. Just, uh, the deck also plays Magma Base. So even when they're initially putting the Pokemon down, that's 20. So even I could spread so and damage. that's 40, like, first turn. Yeah, it's just, like, so much damage just builds up. And Third even treat. Tapu Coco could do 50 with the Choice Man like at the that. front. And, like... Either Lysandre, like a uh, Shaman, and that's a hundred damage, you know. So then after that, it's it's just like free prizes. I don't know. We were testing the deck, and I think I think if I were going to Madison this weekend, I would highly consider it. Like I already have my invite, so I kind of want to play something fun. And I'm no way I'm no way gonna get into top sixteen, so it's like I might as well try to have fun with it. 
this last weekend at Seattle, I chose Jesse Plume to play, and it was just the wrong deck choice. Like, it was not fun to play at all. I was wrong, just... guys. I'm sorry. I should have No, it's okay. I believe it's too. Decision. I thought, I, I, thought it too. I thought it was right, too. I thought it was right, too. I think all of us told them to play, dude. All of us oh, told them yeah. to play. It's so true. We did. <laughs> it was. It was the deck, and I just, I was so sold by it. But then, but then the night before, it was either this deck or Drampa Garb, and I was seriously going to switch to Drampa Garb, but I don't know. Just my gut told me to go with, uh... Jesse Plume and just see where it goes. And I think our Drampa Garb list was very different than the one that won us. So oh, it yeah, depends yeah. on how many changes you That's have true. made. Our list was true. not as advanced as that. We didn't play it as much as we should have. Um, but I mean, who knows? It could have been different. It could have been maybe it's better. We just didn't play it, so, so we never know. It's true. But I doubt it. Yeah. Um, what do you? I don't know what is, what else is good against what what else is good against Garbodor? Like is I know some people are talking about like Volcania. It has a good matchup against uh, Garb if they don't play the Garbotoxin or if they don't play it correctly. Um, I know some people were talking about um, basically like Zorark, uh, Zorark Duck Dead, or like Vespa Queen Zorark. I think Vespa Queen is also something that could. Vespa Queen's supposed to have a positive matchup. Yeah. Um. I think Vespa Queen has a really favorable matchup versus Garbodor because for sure. once they once they run out of Garbodor, what are they going to attack with? Like yeah, you're true. eventually you're eventually going to attack with the GX and then you're going to win the game. Yeah. Where yeah. you could just keep streaming streaming Vespa Queen and then you have special charge. Like yeah. you could even yeah. it, it depends. But like I think it's just uh, it depends on what you play with uh, Vespa Queen. Yeah. Because we were talking about this earlier, Tony, how Vespa Queen has so many partners that can play right now. Um, I know people. some people were talking about like uh, Garbodor, Lycanroc, uh, the what list that got second in Seattle played uh, Zorark and Melodic, uh, which I think is also really strong as well. Uh, but the partners for that deck are literally endless. Uh, basically, any stage one that can, do, can attack with the DCE could be played in that deck. Uh, it, yep. could play, it could play Coco, it could play Buddy, it could play all kinds of different techs in it. And I think that's one of the... I think it could be really strong going into Madison. Um, only thing I'd watch out for is, like, Espeon, because Divine is really strong against it. And then also, like, uh, like heavy stuff with Tauros, because, like, Tauros is a super... is a, is a huge bully early game against Vespa Queen. And other than that, though, Vespa Queen has pretty strong matchups going into this weekend. Uh, but I think let's ask this if you were going because I, I don't think any of us are going to Madison other than Tony you're considering it right yeah um, like, he's like last minute considering it um, but if you were going to go and it's the night before you had to pick between two different decks uh, what would those two decks be I'll go ahead and start uh, on this one I think my two decks right now would be Nightails or basically like a Drampa Garb uh, beer. And basically the way I would play Drampa is with like altars and like maybe a rainbow or two. I don't know. I don't think rainbow is all that good in the deck though just because you have to attach it to a bench and then you can't hit a turn two. You have to hit a turn three. Uh, but the reason for altars is for Espeon and also I think a lot of people are going to go to magma base so I think altars is the better, way, better play to just counter that. Like just to stay a step above of it. Uh, but I think I would be lead, leading towards more towards Nine Tails because I think the deck is really strong. But uh, what would what would you play going into the deck, uh, going into Madison Tony? Um, if I had two deck choices, one would for sure be a a Garbodor variant because I think Garbodor is just a really strong card, and like regardless of what you're gonna play against, if your opponent doesn't play. Re- resource fully then they're they're easily gonna lose um and with and with garbador like it just had so many things to play against like if you were playing against vespa quinn or um gyrdos like sam sam and a couple of other people played the azel or stay magma base and then you drop the azel you're you're killing the, the combi or you're killing the magic card and you take like two maybe three prizes at least one but i just think it's a really strong card um 
But I think Azov would definitely be replaced with Togo now. Because that's pretty yeah. treat. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. So <clears throat> and I also think Jampo Guard was really strong because if, when everyone was basically playing at least two Rainbow, Enhanced Hammer isn't such a prevalent card anymore. No. That's true. People don't play Hammer very much. So you... I, 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 I'm sorry, I should have uh, clarified. I would play Drampo Garb, like the map variant of Drampo. You would play Drampo Garb as well, not go Espo on that? Or? Yeah, I wouldn't play Espeon, I would play Drampo Garb. Okay. Or, um, I think I would play <coughs> best which probably is my second best choice. What was the second? Vigo? Best Oh, best McQuaid, yeah. I think, I think those That's are both. Cool. What about you, Kev? Um... I mean, obviously a Garbodor variant, um, whether it be, if, there, if I think there's going to be a lot of Drampa Garb, I would honestly consider the the Vespa Queen Garbodor list with the Lycanroc in it, just because Lycanroc just slaps uh, Drampa for a lot of damage. Um, it's just a solid answer to it. Um, it's fast. I think the deck has a lot of attackers like Tony was talking about. Um, I also think Vespa Queen is just really good in general. Um, I don't enjoy playing the decks. I have a hard time not playing, I guess, resourcefully. I, I like decks like Garbodor and stuff. Just normal Garb, Drampa Garb, stuff like that. I'm used to playing like that. Um, but I also play a lot of Night March, so I'm okay with Vespa Queen too. Um, but I would also consider this Dark Rye list with all these energies in it. I think it's really good. Um, I open-handed like five Dark Energies and still hit like four Elixirs in the same turn. Um, so so long. Uh, it was crazy. Um, I played against an Espeon Garb. He got Espeon out turn one. I'm resistant. This just didn't do much. It was crazy. It was a really good matchup. I just dominated it. I didn't play too much with it, though, so who knows? My Alter results are like of three games. So I still think the deck's really cool. It's something I would consider for sure. I think Darkrai's still really strong and underrated. Or maybe even some kind of Lurantis, because I think that card's really good as well. Daniel, what about you? Um, so I definitely like... Uh, a dark, um, the dark ride like seems interesting, but I don't know. I think I'd go with like water box. Like I like Israel's play. Like it was. I've been testing it lately, and it's just been running so smoothly. It's just it reminds me of Evatol. It goes. It goes so fast with four max elixir, four patch. Like you're setting a Lapras up. You could set one up in one turn, honestly, and get like. The GX off first turn for something, and then get a turn two knockout on EX. You know, it's yeah. it's just so strong. It's it's been testing really well, so I like it a lot. And then, obviously, I play Barbador variant. It just it's just too dominant. I don't know. Um, I like I like the Garbodor like Espeon version just because. Like we said before, Magma Base is probably the staple. So if you're not playing Alter, like that confusion is gonna hurt. Like it is, it is a strong play. Like versus a lot of decks, I was playing with Espeon before it was in Mewtwo. Before that, like I just made a Espeon deck itself because I learned that that confusion that. could be so annoying. It could just be game changing. They have to play differently. They have to think differently. You're making your opponent play out of the norm. So. It's uh, also a good choice, but I don't know. Maybe just Jampa Garb and like we said before, just teched out like Tapu Koko, Pseudo Wudo. Um, maybe put in something else. Maybe there's something else you could throw into the mirror that uh, could surprise people. I think a lot of people are going to cut Garbo Toxin. Yeah, I, I, I think I, so too. I'm not sure if it's the right thing to do, but I think a lot of people are. I think that, I, I mean, it'll make other things playable, but no one's going to realize that for a couple of weeks, so who knows. After, after seeing last, uh, last week's results for uh, Seattle, like, there wasn't a lot of Greninja. No. There was, like, no. I don't I don't think one made cut. Mm -mm. Why do you guys think Digi was, because Digi was so hyped before Seattle, I remember seeing all the videos that people posted, all the articles, like, Digi's bad, Digi's bad. Why did it not do well in Seattle? What do you guys think? Ninja's always had the same problem of losing to itself. That's true. That is very true. I mean, I think the Talonflame version is the better version. Um, just I think Talonflame's just amazing against everything in this game right now. Against Garbodor, like, you don't have to play anything. You just Talonflame every turn. Yeah. You never play anything, even against Drampo. Like, it's not a big deal. You have a ton of HP. 
Um, so I think it's really good against that, and I think a lot of people didn't play that version, or just a lot of people didn't play it in general. Like I think Sylveon's like the same concept. A lot of people didn't play it in general. Yeah, I think from so what too. I'm hearing, and like no one saw it. I think the deck's awful, but um, I I still think it's. I'm sure more people will start playing it again. I do think that Sylvia, like, I, I, I tested Sylvia for a little while, and I think that ultimately it has a lot of things, it has a lot of problems, and I think it doesn't have a lot of good matchups going in this format. Uh, but one thing that I do like, I, I like a kind of a contender, like Daniel mentioned, was the water box. Uh, I, I did a little bit of video on that earlier. Uh, the wishy-washy... Uh, baby is so good at that with just being able to coward us up and then just hit it for 160s but um, one thing that I was think I've been hearing a lot the ultimate tech in Garbodor that people are talking about is flare grunt in the mirror match yeah because you can I'm just flare grunt their, yeah, yeah. Just flare grunt their energy uh, every energy Garbodor. counts yeah right oh yeah search with it for tap a lele so you can just like plan ahead in time so Yep. I don't know. I, that's why I like I I missed a card that searched for a supporter. Like I missed Jirachi X essentially. Like <laughs> this format the needed to be so good. this format know, needed something. Yeah, you just <laughs> it is. It's just a Mewtwo and a Jirachi put together. Like with no weakness. it changed the format so much. And like I don't know. Now those one tech supporters are perfect to play just because you are able to search it out at the right time. Like. Ninja Boy is great. Delinquent is now even like perfect to play. Like, I don't know. It's just a lot of good one ups. Like now Team Fireground too. So it's a good card. Like it's definitely showing up in this tournament. I think so too. Uh, I think a lot of people will go to Fireground just because it does give you that edge in the Garbodor matchup if you're playing Mirror or even if you're not playing Mirror. It just kind of gives you that edge, just being able to get rid of their energy on their Drampa early. Right. Um, right, exactly. Yeah. Is there any other uh, any, any other thoughts? Anything else that you guys think that might show up? Any uh, anything that you guys want to mention on this for Madison? People that are going. The any advice? Uh, anything? <laughs> um, I would just like don't give up on your ideas. Like this format is so wide right now. Like. I think there are decks out there that beat Jeff or Garb, and I think that those same decks can also be the existing meta. Like, just, I think we haven't found the right combo yet. I think there's too many options to go through, so I think those people who decide to take the risk this weekend will get rewarded because, uh, just like I said, this format is so wide in variety. Like Russell, he played uh, Vickable last week. Right. He didn't. Yeah. He didn't know what. He didn't know how he was gonna do, but he lost to his winning it in for Russell. Exactly. Poor Russell. Yeah. Always play the crazy stuff though. I gotta okay. get, gotta give him credit though. I love it. That's awesome. Yeah, I think man, if you got a, if you have a cool idea or a deck that you think can work, man, just go for it. It it could work. Who knows? You know, this format's really weird. Just as long as it doesn't play a lot of trainers like trainers mills and stuff like that, you'll probably be all right. Um, just make sure you understand your Garbodor matchup, that's for sure. Um, yeah. Understand how stuff like that works. Be prepared for probably more stuff like Greninja. A lot of think, people think Greninja has positive matchups against uh, Garbodor. Uh, I think otherwise, but uh, definitely could be the other way. I mean, don't get me wrong, if you get Talonflame early, if or people, more people play Talonflame, I think the matchup's decent. Um, but I don't think people will, so I think Greninja will stay out of this cut as well. Or maybe just one or two of them. But I do think more Nine Tails will pop up with Coco for sure because that sets up so many, so many big numbers. Yeah, sure. the big seventy for sure on the Ice Blade on the Travishes is always <laughs> fire. Um, I think for me, uh, I would just say just build your list savvy of Garbodor. Like twenty four out of thirty two, you have to expect it. Like you have to go and do it in this tournament knowing you're going to be playing. I would say roughly at least three rounds of Garbodor, maybe even more. Uh, that, on average, so you gotta build your list to actually be able to beat those, beat that deck. But I also think that you can't build your deck so guard focused that you lose to everything else too. 
Uh, so you, you have to find a happy medium in, in whatever you decide to play. And I think that I think Daniel's right. I think there's so many different options that you could play in this format. Um, there's so many good decks right now. There's so many good cards where we just don't know. Like the perfect combination could be out there. We don't even realize it. Um, so if you have something crazy that beats Garbodor and is teched well against the format, just play it, dude. There's no reason not to. Um, Risk, risk, hold rewards. Like even even Kettler before Decidueye play was a big thing. He played it out of, he played it because he thought he thought it was good, and look what it became out of it. Like it became a monstrous deck throughout. Yeah, he created, he created <laughs> yeah, a problem. He, he literally created the problem. Um, but it's just one of those things where you just never know. It could just be that good. Um, but. I think Bundle B is really underrated right now. I think it could be really good in all these Garbodor decks. Um, I know there was like a European list that played like three bunnies or something. Um, yeah, I don't know. It seems pretty decent to me if everyone's playing Garbodor. It seems really good to me. Um, Drampa's, I mean, Drampa's a lot of damage against it, though. It's pretty fast, too. So. I mean, I they, ha- they have to still commit the DCE to it. They have to actually berserk in order to kill it. So. Yeah, I mean, if you can hit Bundle B and Flare Gun or something, too, that'd be just... Yeah, disgusting. And you just constantly search, just ditch it back in too. It's yeah. just be searching for it. I don't know. Uh, so like good, like good, good cards in like the garbage room right now would definitely be player grunt and maybe an enhanced hammer even too. Because if you're playing enhanced hammer and they just like straight go up to Jampa focus, you're gonna enhance hammer player grunt the same turn and they're. Or you could even write this as with your Jampa. Like they're they're so far behind at that point. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I think that energy denial is probably gonna be the way to go to help the the rear match. Um, I think other than that, basically just being like espion savvy with alters, um, magma base is good too. Like just because you can set up the drapa. Basically, you have to decide which route you want to go, um, and decide which is the better route. But ultimately, I think that. It's basically be prepared for garb or don't play garb or play garb and be still be prepared for it. But um, any closing thoughts? Uh, I think this will be the last. Any closing uh, thoughts that we have overall, or is everyone basically said their fill? Good luck to everyone going to Madison this weekend. Hope you guys had a good week of testing for the new format and that uh, you choose the right deck. Uh, Tapu Bulu, I think, is under the radar. I think, like I said, a Tapu Koko deck, like just like a spread deck, could be working. I hope there's a Pokemon out there that says you can transfer damage counters from one Pokemon to another on your front side of the field. I think there is, but I can't remember what Pokemon does it. Just I know so Pokemon yeah. play it. But that could just be so good, too. But like I said, you throw into something like Rough Seas, and that'll suck. Like, that's yeah. where the deck just, like, becomes useless, and I don't know. But Drampa is a really strong card. Like, Drampa is paired with a lot of good things. Like, I've seen Drampa paired with Zork. I think that's a great play. Like, Zork is such a strong card right now. Yeah. Like, I don't know. That's underestimated as well. I think that's the version of Vest Between I would play. Yeah. Like, that's the tech that it would... I don't know. It's just going to be more helpful in certain matchups. So. Okay. Kevin, you got anything? Uh, for all those people chasing their invites, man, don't give up. You got this weekend. Then you got enters, too. I mean, you can do it. Just uh, play something consistent. Play something good. Play something you know. I guess you don't probably know too much about this format yet. No one does, but play something that seems good. I think you'll make it. Just make sure your deck beats Garbodor. We believe. We believe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Tony, you got any uh, closing thoughts? Um, good luck to everyone going to Madison and Sport. Yeah. And if you play Garbodor, Drampa, I would definitely play a Floyd Grind. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't play Floyd Grind, I would expect to lose too. <laughs> I, I'll, like, if, you, if, you, if you beat it then you're gone I would expect <laughs> and I, that's another thing like if you're playing mirror match expect the flare grunt like play yeah. around the flare grunt like I feel like Garbodor Jampa is now gonna become 
like people call garb like how it was like December because people like started playing that. Yeah, they started playing Flurgra and Toon Hand Hammer from here. <laughs> that totally can I can totally see it too. Um yeah. I think E Hammer like the one thing that's kinda of weird about E Hammer though is the fact that like you just play it and it's like, oh it's plus twenty. But I think overall <laughs> It's still like it's still really strong though because, like you said, like Drampa is just such a huge force going in, and if you just shut that off with a flare ground e hammer or just even e hammer like flare like flare ground righteous edge, like that's just so strong. You're yeah. literally back to square one with minus one DC minus one psychic in the discard. So, um, but uh, ultimately, yeah, good luck, guys, in Madison. I hope you guys do well. Made the right deck choice build your deck around garb uh, but again not too much to where you lose to other things as well uh, get a good get get a good amount of sleep and everything else too throughout the events you know these things go off crazy uh, but just play something you're comfortable with play something that you can play nine rounds of Swiss state it's best sort of three with uh, comfortably uh, and play it the best way you can but uh, this has been our kind of little discussion panel for that this Madison weekend, uh, we'll be doing these more as these other events coming out, like for Mexico and the uh, origins of that, and then for internationals, we'll probably do one right before we leave because we're all going to be at internationals for sure. Uh, I know Tony's going to be at Mexico, uh, so hit him up there, um, and the rest of us will be at internationals for sure. But uh, thank you guys so much uh, for thank you my panel for kind of. Explore the format for Madison. Hopefully, we've given you guys some good advice, some good, uh, some good insight about this format. Uh, so, thank you guys for that. And if you've watched up to this point, thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. You know, subscribe to me on Chimichalupa on YouTube, to, uh, Twitch Chimichalupa TCG. You know, all the handles, all those normal social media handles. Uh, if you like this content, you can definitely follow me there. Uh, but that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Bye.